Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Elizabeth Taylor in Zoe Aiken's Morning Glory on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a dramatization of a deservedly popular play written by that very fine American playwright, Zoe Akins who won the Pulitzer Prize in 1931. Our play is Morning Glory, and it handles with great sympathy and discernment the theme of a young girl's dreams and ambitions. Now, the dreams and ambitions of youth are both tough and fragile. They can be handicapped by early success as well as by failure, and their ultimate success is part of the general problem of coming to terms with life itself. These are among the many interesting angles of Miss Aikens' story, and its title, Morning Glory, well suits the freshness with which the whole subject is approached. In a play like this, an extra special something depends upon the actress who takes the chief part. And for this reason, we are especially lucky in having with us Miss Elizabeth Taylor. And now, Frank Goss, haven't you something to say about Hallmark? There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Zoe Aiken's Morning Glory, and starring Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> where every actor dreams of the one part that will come his way and launch him to stardom. To all actors, the name of Louis Easton, Broadway's top producer, is magic. And this day, he is casting a new play. His outer office is filled with hopeful aspirants, some old, some new, and the inevitable young actress with stardust in her eyes. You're Robert Hedges, the great actor, aren't you? I knew you right off. May I sit here next to you? Well, of course, young lady. Mr. Hedges, I want you for my first friend in New York. My name's Eva Lovelace. It's partly made up and partly real. It was Ada Love. Love's my family name. I added the lace. How oh, charming. Do you like it? Or would you prefer something shorter? A shorter name would be more convenient on a sign. Still, Eva Lovelace and Camille. Or Eva Lovelace and Romeo and Juliet. Sounds very distinguished, doesn't it? I agree wholeheartedly. You see, I don't want to keep my family name because I shall probably have several scandals while I live, and, well, I don't want to cause them any trouble. Until I'm famous, then nobody will mind. Mm. That's why I must decide on something at once while there's still time before I'm famous. Uh, Don't you think there's something very charming? Something that just suits me about Eva Lovelace? It fits you beautifully. Very beautifully. And you speak so beautifully. And I know I speak so nondescriptly. Would you be my dramatic teacher? Give me a lesson every day right off. But I... Oh, I'll pay you. Not at once, because I... Well, I only have enough money for... For a certain length of time. And another thing. I must have a teacher that believes in me unequivocally. What? Unequivocally. Do you mean unequivocally? Yes, that's it. Ah. Merci, monsieur. All right. You see, those are the sort of things I've just got to learn. I'll give you an I.O.U. after every lesson, and when I begin to make money, I'll buy back the slips of paper. Let's start today. I, uh, I'd better think it over, my dear. Oh, wonderful. Then you will be my teacher. Oh. Did you oh. ever know Ellen Terry? Yes. It was a long time ago. Was she very, very lovely? Yes. The very loveliest thing I ever saw in all my life. Oh, I've always known she was. Did you ever see Sarah Bernhardt? On stage and off. Many times. More wonderful than Ellen Terry? They were both 
wonderful. Bernhardt broke your heart. Ellen Terry mended it. Oh, I suppose I shall never be wonderful. Not wonderful like them. But, but I've something very wonderful in me. You'll see. You'll help me with all the great parts. Lady Macbeth, Juliet, Cleopatra. Well, Hello, uh, Bob Hedges. How are you? Oh, fine. Feeling fine again. Thank you, Mr. Easton. Now, I'm sorry the part we have for you isn't too big, Bob, but don't worry. One of these days I'll be producing Shakespeare again. Oh, please do, Mr. Easton. Hey, who are you? Uh, this young woman, Mr. Easton, is a pupil of mine. She's anxious to become an actress. Really? I didn't know that young women anxious to become actresses ever took the trouble to learn how. What's your name? Eva Lovelace. You like it? I could change it if you don't. Oh, it's charming, my dear. <laughs> uh, Bob, go into my office and sign your contract, huh? Thank you. If there's one person in the whole world I prayed particularly to meet, it's you, Mr. Easton. Well, thank you. Have you had much stage experience? Oh, yes. In Franklin, Vermont. That's my hometown. I starred in the little theater. Oh. I play all sorts of parts. Hedda, you know, Ibsen's Hedda, of mm. course. The old woman in Singer's Riders to the Sea. And Kitty in Shaw's You Never Can Tell. George Bernard Shaw. Oh, of course. The one and only. There will always be a Shaw play in my repertoire, as long as I remain in the theater. Of course, I expect to die at my zenith. My star shall never set. I've sworn that. Uh, have you read, read Molnar's new play, The Golden Bough? Now, look, miss, I own that play. Miss Rita Vernon will star in The Golden Bough. Oh, but Mr. Easton, she could never do justice to the part. I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. I heard what she said about Rita Vernon doing the golden bow. I agree with her. This rude fellow is Joseph Sheridan. I'd fire him this moment, only he happens to be a good writer. And this beautiful girl with a beautiful mind? Eva Lovelace. Mr. Easton, will you let me play the golden bow when you put it on? If Miss Vernon isn't satisfactory? Yeah, really, I can't afford to... Oh, I... money's nothing to me. Absolutely oh. nothing. I could have married for money if I'd wanted to. Edwin Talbert, son of W.E. Talbert, one of the richest men in Franklin, Vermont, wanted me to marry him. You've heard of W.E. Talbert. The Chow Chow King, they call him. Uh, why don't you let her read the part? Anything would be an improvement on Vernon. Miss Lovelace, if there's anything I can do for you at a future well, date... Well, why wait? Uh, in the play you're casting today, There's I... nothing for you, sorry. Let's go, Joseph. There's lots of work to be done. Good day, Miss Lovelace. Uh, I know you're a better actress than Rita Vernon. Thank you, Mr. Sheridan. I quite agree. Au revoir, Mr. Easton. I'm so glad I met you. I've always reverenced you for the fine things you've done in the theater. Au revoir. The girl's a character. I think she's got something. I like her. She's got nerve. Wouldn't she uh, do for that bit in the last act? Heavens, no. Well, we'll probably never see her again. <laughs> I wonder. How'd the opening go tonight? Great, Harry. Looks like a hit. How could you miss with Miss Rita Vernon? <laughs> Thanks, Harry. You know what you're talking about. Oh, Joseph, if you tightened the second act a bit, it would play better. I'm going to write you a play in pantomime, and I won't be forced to listen to you ruin my lines. Now, look, this is supposed to be a celebration. We're having a party tonight at my apartment for the entire cast, and... Say, isn't that that character, Eva Lovelace, sitting inside that broken-down restaurant? I... Yeah, it is. I think I'll go in and talk to her. Stop wasting your time, Joseph. Come on, there's my car. I'll uh, see you later. Remember me, Miss Lovelace? Why, of course. You're Joseph Sheridan, the writer. <laughs> Bob Hedges tells me that you show great promise as an actress. Why did you stop going to him for lessons? Well, I, I've been very busy. Things have been looking up for me, something wonderful. Oh, well, I'm glad things are going well for you. You know, I've been worrying about you. Why, there's no need for that. But thank you. Well, I've got to be running along now. You're not going out in that thin coat in this rainy cold. Oh, I like to feel cold. It makes me feel strong. I shouldn't like to go about swathed in furs unless they're sables. Uh, come on, I'll take you home. Where do you live? Oh, well, now, isn't that stupid of me? I, I, I just can't remember the address. 
You see, I, I just moved. I, I didn't like the quarters I was in. Sure. Sure, I know exactly how it feels. I've been through it myself. Can you use some money? Why, Mr. Sheridan, did you think I moved because... Oh, no, 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 of course not, Miss Lovelace. <laughs> Do you mind if I call you Eva? I'd adore it, Mr. Sheridan. Joseph. <laughs> well, now that we're good friends, uh, would you... Would you come with me to Lewis Easton's party tonight? Oh, I... I couldn't. Yet it, it would be wonderful to see him again. <laughs> sure. And when the party is over, I'm going to see to it that you get a railroad ticket to Vermont. You're going home, Eva, where you can't get hurt. Oh, but I'm not going home, Joseph. I'm going places. <laughs> This is a wonderful party, Mr. Easton. Everything interests me. That's why someday I'm going to be a great actress, because, well, well because I look around and absorb and understand. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll I... will never forget this night. Don't go away, Lewis. This child is too, too amusing. You've been to a party before, haven't you, dear? Oh, yes, Miss Vernon. But if my friends in Frank and Brabant could only see me here with all these famous people... Like yourself and Mr. Easton. Oh, it's really not as wonderful as all that. Oh, but it is. Oh. I love your party. And I love New York. I love to walk and walk and look and look. Now, in Franklin, if you walk and walk, you get way out on a country road where there's nothing but big trees and fields. And yet, oh, I don't know. There's something about it, about those fields, that gives you a feeling of, of being great and lonely. I feel it now, right here in my heart. I tell you, I know. I know. I know I'm a great actress. Uh, please, please be quiet. This is hardly the place or time for an audition. Oh, but it is, Lewis. Listen, everybody. Miss, uh, uh, what's your name, dear? Eva. Eva Lovelace. Miss Lovelace has kindly consented to perform for you. She's a great artist and positively will astound you. I predict a great future for this little girl. What do you do best? Sing? Dance? Imitate wild animals? Cut it out, Rita. You're not being very amusing, Rita. Come on, Eva, let's get out of here. No, Joseph. Miss Vernon asked me to perform. I shall oblige her. And, Miss Vernon, I can imitate a cow moo and a dog bark. Oh, please, oh, Miss Lovelace. Just... Now turn off the light and leave this one light on my face. And you, you, listen. Listen, I tell you. Romeo. Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love. And I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more? Or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. What's in a name? That which we call a rose, by any other name, would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Oh, Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name, which is no part of thee, take all my self. Beautiful, Easton. Beautiful. Yes, Joseph, beautiful. Childishly beautiful. Impossibly beautiful. In just a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of Morning Glory. But say, what are you reading there, Elizabeth Taylor? <laughs> Let me read it to you, Mr. Goss. She looked just like a princess, too, but it was understood. She didn't always act the way a little princess should. Like when she drew a picture of her teacher on her slate. 
And they got awfully mad because she had to stay in late. Oh, I know who that is. It's Amy, the part you play in MGM's new movie, Little Women. Say, wasn't that one of the new Hallmark Little Women dolls you just read that verse from? May I see it? Here you are. Why, isn't she a pretty little thing? Look at this gorgeous plume in her hat. Yes, and see how she stands up. And the back is just as pretty as the front. You know, Mr. Goss, an artist came right on the set and sketched me in costume while we were making Little Women. Sketched all the girls, didn't he? Yes, Janet Lee, June Allison, Margaret O'Brien and myself. You know, we each autographed the dolls whose part we played. It's been fun for all of us, and we're so pleased about the dolls. We know they're going to make so many children happy. Yes, they'll make wonderful gifts. And you can mail them just like greeting cards. I've already sent them to loads of my friends. Later on, Elizabeth, I'm going to tell all our listeners more about these beautiful Hallmark Little Women dolls. But now, it's back to the Hallmark Playhouse for the second act of Morning Glory, starring Elizabeth Taylor. romantic young girl like Eva Lovelace, Louis Easton seemed a knight in shining armor, and to him, Eva was something new, something different. Impressed by her obvious adoration of him, he sent her flowers, intimate notes, and invited her to dine with him. Now, a month later, in his office, Louis Easton talks to Joseph Sheridan, while Eva waits impatiently to see him in the outer office. I can't help it if she's infatuated with me. I didn't ask Eva Lovelace to fall in love with me. Now, do me a favor. Get rid of her. The decent thing would be for you to tell her yourself. I haven't the time. I'm leaving for London on the afternoon plane. I don't want to see her again. Well, how do you suppose I go about telling her? You're a writer. Dream up something, anything. If there was anything I could say, I'd say it, but oh, with her... Oh, come on, come on. She's just another girl. I don't think you understand what... What do you mean? I'm in love with her. Oh, I'm sorry, Joseph. I didn't know. It's all right. Too bad she fell in love with the wrong man. I suppose as soon as she begins to look at things sensibly, the better it'll be. I'll make her understand. I hope. Oh, thanks, Joseph. I'll call you from London. Keep the home fires burning. And for heaven's sake, don't get in any arguments with Rita Vernon. Start rehearsing Golden Bow. I'll be back in time for the opening. Send Miss Lovelace in. Hello, Joseph. Where's Lewis? Please sit down. There's something I want to tell you. Will he be gone long? I'm afraid so. I'll wait for him. We're going to do wonderful things together, Lewis and I. Oh, sure, sure. Strange how it all happened. It seems as if it was only yesterday I was alone and frightened. Life's suddenly become very different for me. I wonder if you understand. I think so. It isn't because he's in the theater or, or because he's in... An important person and can help me? Eva. Eva. Lewis has gone to London for three months. London? Did he. Did he leave any message for me? No, no, not a word. Not even a goodbye? No. Oh, it doesn't matter, really, Joseph. He'll write me and explain. I wouldn't count on that. If I were you, I'd, I'd forget I ever met a man called Louis Easton. How can you say that? I love him. He loves me. And what does it matter if he never writes? Three days, three months, three years, forever. I'll wait for him. You're young, too young to know what it's all about. Easton is wrong for you. I know you. what my heart tells me. If, if you won't listen, let me help you. I don't need your help, Joseph. <laughs> Mr. Quigley, I'm Eva Lovelace. I'd like to read the part of Queenie for you. Eva Lovelace? I've never heard of you. Get yourself a reputation first and then come around and I'll talk to you. You've never worked in burlesque before, have you? No. And you can sing and you can dance, can you? No, sir. Why don't you go home, kid, where you belong? I'm afraid you're not the type. I haven't got a job for you. But when would you eat last? Oh, I... I'm all right. Thank you. Hey, get some water, somebody. This kid's fainted. Eva! 
Geneva. Do you have a ticket for this dance, Joseph? I've looked everywhere for you for almost three months, and now i found you. You're, you're coming with me. Is Lewis back from London? Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Let's get out of here. I can't, Joseph. I can't walk out on Mr. Peluso. He was kind enough to give me this job. When will Lewis be back? Look, I, I have a job for you in Golden Bow. It isn't much, but you'll be general understudy to the whole cast. It'll be great experience for you, and you'll have your foot in the door. And I'd be near Lewis. I'll be the best understudy in the whole world. <laughs> That's it, Lewis. I've made up my mind. For heaven's sake, Rita, be reasonable. Fifteen minutes to curtain, Miss Vernon. There won't be any curtain, Lewis, unless you rewrite my contract. You won't get away with it, you Rita. You said that before. Either you meet my demands or I don't open tonight. Now get out, Easton. You too, Joseph. Listen, Easton, listen. I've got the girl who can play Rita Vernon's part. Where is she? In a dressing room. She's general understudy. You mean to say you take a chance on an understudy on opening night? On this girl, yes. Are you crazy? Who's the girl? A friend of yours. Eva Lovelace. Hurry up, hurry up, Eva. They're holding the curtain for you. Joseph, I, I don't know whether I can go through with it. I'd be terribly frightened if I knew Lewis were watching. You've got to forget Lewis Easton. Listen, Joseph. I wanted to kill myself when I didn't hear from him. I didn't see any reason to keep on. I couldn't make good. I did all sorts of things, trying to pretend to myself it was all sort of a joke. Just experience. That I'd make up for all of it by being wonderful someday. You will tonight, darling. Yes, but suppose I'm not wonderful. Then everything's gone. If I can't act, there's nothing left. Because even if he came to me now on his knees, it would be too late. That's the tragedy. And I don't think I can act, Joseph. And even if I can, what does it matter? Oh, but it matters a lot, Eva. It's the chance you've always dreamed of. It's your life. You're right, Joseph. You're right, of course. It was silly the way I just talked. I'll give a performance tonight that'll make you proud of me. <laughs> so much. Thanks. Thank you. This is your dressing room, Eva. Eva, my darling, you were superb. Magnificent. Oh, Lewis. Lewis, I've waited. Waited for you. I know. There's something I must tell you. About us? Mm hmm About you and me? I'm sorry for the way I've behaved. Let's not talk about that, please. It's going to be so much more wonderful now. You'll be so proud of me, really you will. And I can be so wonderful for you. You see, you're in my heart. Listen, Eva, you... You must put me out of your heart. I don't belong there. I'm not the man for you I never was. You don't belong to any man. You belong to Broadway, the theater, bright lights. From now on, you're under my professional wing. And that's all. I... I understand. But I can make you the biggest star that Broadway's ever known. You've got to keep your head and work hard. Come in. It's not going to be easy doing the same job night after night. That's why you mustn't take too seriously. The people are going to be running after you, telling you what to do. If you want to go on, Eva, keep your health, your money, and your head. Hello, Joseph. Nice speech, Lewis. The press is waiting to interview the new first lady of the theater. And I mean it, Eva. I'll talk to them first. See you later. I... I could tell you so much. Words mean so little. You look tired. I am. Crushed. Yes. 
Once I thought Lewis loved me and that I loved him. That seems awfully long ago. You've always been so good to me, Joseph. Someday I'll, I'll tell you why. Right now, you must rest. Joseph, I, I'm frightened. Terribly frightened. But why, darling? This is your day. And tomorrow? The day after and the years to come? Oh, darling, you'll be the greatest. I know it, I know it. Suddenly, I... I've grown up, Joseph. I see what's before me. Louis Easton tried to frighten me into being sensible. But he needn't worry. I know the road. I'll work hard. Harder than anyone's ever worked before. You see, Joseph, I don't want to be a morning glory. A flower that fades before the sun is very high. I'll be everything you ever wanted me to be. I promise you. I promise you. James Hilton and Elizabeth Taylor will return in just a moment. But now, here's what I promised to tell you about Hallmark Little Women Dolls, the newest addition to the famous Hallmark Doll Collection. Little Women Dolls are in full-color costume with real feather plumes in their hats. They're eight inches high and stand up all by themselves. Each doll has a clever verse that tells all about her and is autographed by the star who played her part in the popular movie Little Women. Hallmark Little Women Dolls are only 25 cents each or it's a dollar for the entire set of four in a colorful, permanent portfolio. Buy Hallmark Little Women dolls at the Friendly Store, where you find Hallmark greeting cards. Some little friend will love you for them. And now here again is James Hilton. I'd like to speak for every member of the Hallmark family when I tell you, Miss Elizabeth Taylor, that your presence on the Hallmark Playhouse this evening was a very happy occasion for us. I enjoyed it too, Mr. Hilton. I'm very happy to become better acquainted with you and with all the Hallmark family, since now I'm one of you. And one of the very prettiest, too. Don't you think so, Frank Goss? Yes, Mr. Hilton. And it's going to be a real pleasure for children to collect little women dolls when they realize that Miss Taylor posed for one of them. And I'd like to remind our friends that the great American classic Little Women by Louisa May Alcott is being shown in motion picture houses around the country. You'll see the inspiration for the Hallmark dolls when you see the stars who make Little Women one of the finest motion pictures in years. You'll see Elizabeth Taylor, Margaret O'Brien, June Allison, and Janet Lee as the Little Women. Look for it at your local theater. Thank you all for inviting me here tonight. And I'd like to thank Gerald Moore, who played Louis Easton, and Tony Barrett, who played Joseph. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, Miss Taylor. And we'd like to have you listen to us next week when we will present that warm and very moving human story of American life, Hartzell Spence's One Foot in Heaven, starring George Brent. And the following week... Christopher Morley's Kitty Foyle, starring June Allison. And after that, James Thurber's great baseball story, You Could Look It Up, starring William Frawley. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all and inviting you next Thursday and every Thursday to tune in one half hour earlier and listen to The Adventures of Casey, Prime Photographer, followed by the Hallmark Playhouse. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>